The recession of the moon indicates a recent history. Oh, really now? Thanks to the gravitational pull of the moon, Earth's coastal seawaters are cleansed and their nutrients replenished regularly. The moon performs wonderful things. What do you mean by cleansing? What do you mean by nutrient? You're just being very vague here. So I'm going to call bullshit. But that doesn't matter since that's not the main argument you're making here. Let's continue. As the moon orbits the Earth, its gravity pulls on the Earth's oceans, causing tides. Okay, there's nothing to debunk on this part, so bear with me. Since the Earth rotates faster than the moon orbits, the tidal bulges induced by the moon are always ahead of the moon because the Earth is, is more energy. It's rotating faster. Watch. For this reason, the tides actually pull forward on the moon. Come on, come on. Which causes the moon to gain energy and gradually spiral outward. The moon moves about an inch and a half farther away from the Earth every year due to this tidal interaction. Hmm. Thus, the moon would have been closer to the Earth in the past. I'm glad he didn't say three inches like almost all other young Earth creationists say. So I'll give you a point there for not presenting false information. However, you do make a fatal error later. So the moon was closer to the Earth in the past. Now, watch. If the Earth and the moon were four billion years old as the Big Bang theory postulates and Big Bang supporters teach. Use 4.5 or 4.6 billion, please. Don't give me 4 billion. That's just such laziness. The moon would have been so close that it would actually have been touching the Earth less than a one and a half billion years ago. <laughs> okay, let's fact check you here. Let's just do some simple math here. The lunar recession rate is about 3 to 4 centimeters per year, but we're going to use 4 centimeters since it's closer to that. I'm going to have to point out that this was lower in the past, partly due to how the positions of the land and sea were during Pangean times. Billions of years ago, it was actually more about 2 centimeters per year, but let's assume it's been constant. You say 1.5 billion years ago, the moon would be touching the earth? Let's see, 1.5 billion multiplied by 4 centimeters and we get 6 billion centimeters, which is the same as about 60,000 kilometers. Right now, the distance between the Earth and the Moon is about 384,000 kilometers. So, what the fuck are you talking about? 60,000 is nowhere close to 384,000. The Moon sure was closer in the past, that's for certain, but it sure wasn't touching the goddamn Earth. The only explanation that could possibly prove your point is if the lunar recession rate were greater in the past. However, like I pointed out earlier, it wasn't. Instead, it was slower billions of years ago. I'll get to this later. For now, just to be sure, let's check out how it would be if we used 4.5 billion years old instead of 1.5. 4.5 billion multiplied by 4 centimeters and we get 18 billion centimeters, which is equivalent to 180,000 kilometers. <laughs> Still doesn't come anywhere close to 384,000 kilometers. Anyway, time for the explanation on why it was slower in the past. At first thought, one might actually think the recession rate was higher before. I mean, let's just think about it. In case you missed it before, the moon recedes from the Earth mostly due to tidal acceleration. Now, you fuckers were probably not paying attention when the creationist in the video explained it, so I'll explain it again. It's very simple really. The moon revolves around the earth and since the side of the earth facing the moon experiences high tide, the high tide can be seen to rotate around the earth with the moon. However, the rotation of the earth itself needs to be put into consideration. The earth rotates in the same direction as the moon orbits, however, it is faster. And as a result, the drag pulls the high tide forward ahead of the moon's orbit. And since the high tide has gravity influence on the moon, it accelerates the moon, thus speeding it up at the cost of slowing down the earth's rotation. This is called tidal acceleration. Now let's get back to the recession rate in the past. One may easily mistaken that the lunar recession rate was lower before. Think about it. Since tidal acceleration has the side effect of slowing down the Earth, that means the Earth surely had a faster rotation in the past, right? And since the Earth was faster, this would push the high tide further ahead of the moon, thus increasing tidal torque and increasing lunar recession rate via greater acceleration. However, this is wrong. In the past, the Earth and the Moon were closer together, obviously, and this means that the Moon orbited the Earth at a much greater rate. 
This had a larger effect over the faster rotation of the Earth, which ultimately actually slowed down the lunar recession. In addition, there are evidences that suggest a lower recession rate in the past. For example, paleontological evidence can be used to predict tidal frequencies. Frequencies were suggested to be much lower in the past, and in case you don't know what that means, it means that the higher speed of the moon's orbit had a greater effect than the high speed of the Earth's rotation. Lower frequencies indicated a lower difference in these two forces. Overall, the main point of this rant is to say that the lunar recession rate was lower in the past. Thus, the 180,000 kilometers we calculated earlier should have been a much lower value than we would have initially thought. This in no way supports the idea of a young Earth. That's just fucking ridiculous, you little piece of shit. Now this is damaging to evolutionary theory. It destroys evolutionary theory. Actually, no, it doesn't. Evolution only states that living organisms change over time. It happens no matter if the Earth is 1,000 years old for all I care. The only thing you're trying to disprove is the age of the Earth. This, I'll admit, can hurt our understanding of species diversities and ancestry, but it doesn't hurt evolution as a whole. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now, I understand that some creationists have beefed up their argument beyond what I covered, so if I ever get a chance, I might make another video on lunar recession. But for now, I'll see you guys later.